Hello everyone, my name is Dramat and today we're going to watch over some of my own games in Diamond 2 and Diamond 3 to learn how to actually gank on Talia. This video will be a Talia guide on roaming. Before I jump into the video, here is the list that at the end of the video I will go through. This is basically a summary of the whole video, I will also post the list in the comments. Basically it's everything you need to know about roaming as Talia or as other champions. I will go in depth five or six minutes talking about this at the end of the clip. So basically this is everything I will talk in the clip. Okay, let's start. We're going to do three specific games in which I tried to gank as good as I could bot lane. Now, in the first game that I want to showcase here, I want to showcase that, uh, I said that twice, that they used their summoner spells and their Warwick is slowly coming bot. Now, their Warwick will show up here, which is kind of a mistake. They try to set up of a dive, but the wave is push, pushed here for them. And nobody pretty much has summoner spells here besides Draven Flash. And again, this Warwick right here tries to dive bot because they try to push, they try to make a play here. In the moment I notice Warwick here, I start to actually look on bot. So this is the first process in your roaming thought process. Basically, it's two cases. One, when you do a reactive gank, such as this one will be. And the second case, where we will be interested in an aggressive gank, where we gank first without knowing or seeing their jungler in the bot lane. So this is what case it is. This is a reactive gank. These are, these are only two possibilities, a reactive or an, maybe an aggressive. The third case would be just a defensive-ish case where you just all to deny but you don't actually go there. And maybe, maybe, maybe a fourth very random case is that when you roam till here and you clear words and then you create pressure by not ganking but by actually staying around this zone so they have to back off, they lose CS, you get the point. But uh, that's the top level kind of roaming where Usually people at the highest LOS, mid laners especially, do that because it's a very, very nice trick to create pressure. I've seen that on a lot of people, I've seen on a lot of other guys, I don't, guys, I don't remember exactly the name, but you get the point. Anyway, we're going to notice here that Warwick and this word here, practically he doesn't have flash. I see, he uses it. Oh, he used it here, okay. And he dived for some reason and... Uh, played horrendously bad. This is a diamond game, by the way. At that point, when I've seen Warwick, let's do it uh, by the book. When I've seen Warwick there, I didn't really much care about the outcome of their fight. I just knew I could help. And so, I've seen they killed him. Okay, no problem. I'm just level 3, with the Glectrocute, with all summoner spells. So I just go ham on the Draven. Now, he didn't use Flash here, as I can see. And that's weird, but... Or maybe he doesn't have it, it's not a summer spell, but bug from Spectator. Anyway, that's a reactive gank. This is the first example. Just flash, I flash trying to get all the damage done. Possibly all the damage I could put on him. Basically, even if he flashed here, if I walked this way, I think eventually I would have caught him. Uh, but without the, my passive, because it doesn't proc, because you're between minions. But I think I would have killed him. Doesn't matter that, I would have still got a kill on their support. It's a good roam, a good reactive roam regardless. And it all started because Warwick failed there. And this is a 12 minute game, okay? This is a 12 minute game. We ended real fast after this fail place. Anyway, I want to showcase you the next quick roam. It's about here, okay? Here I'm level 6, I have my ult, I don't have summoner spells, and their bot lane is about here, I know only Draven has flash, I see their warrior here, I, I see it now, but it's not on vision, so we don't know where he is. But, what we do know, is that on a 3 versus 3, with a level 6 Talia and 2 level 3 level 4s, I think we do have the advantage if we play smart. I mean, Zillian has to hit his combo and he's also low HP here, it's pretty hard for them to answer directly. Now, I've been over a word here apparently. And normally, they should know that, but uh, see, this is an interesting thing. I win over a word, and they go here aggressively. I mean, Warwick is kind of trollish at this point. They got a kill on Karma, 
And again, this kind kind of is a reactive gang. And look at this. Okay, you see this? If you want, I can actually turn the fog of war for both teams. I knew they were there. I I had a general idea because they didn't back off after they killed Karma for some reason, and they knew I was coming. I had vision where here. They I don't. That word went away, but I don't think they actually thought I could come here. And what's going to happen here? Secondary Rome, easy, easy triple kill. Two kills for Kaiza, one kill for me. Now this is a mistake that happened in Diamond 3 on best. I'm Diamond 2 now, don't worry. I don't drop to 4, <laughs> I know that hard stuck me. Well, I'm hard stuck a bit, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, here... They knew I was still coming. They should have backed off immediately. This is a typical mistake that we'll see at all ELOs. This isn't Diamond Tree for God's sake. Why they are still here? What's that point of being still here when you all have no summoner spells? How could you even escape a gang? And also you can notice the alt direction. This is the alt that you want in this scenario. Maybe a bit upwards could work too, like this way. So when you gank, the main factor of you, of your champion, the main factor that you have to work well with is that a good ult. It's, uh, how can I pronounce this right? If you gank bot, you can use your ult or you don't have your ult yet. Most of the time you should use your ult to, cross, to cut paths, to cross paths, to make people jump on this way. If you hit them, they are getting in this zone. And as this scenario, look, perfect alt. Even though I jumped in between three of them, they actually don't really have the damage to do anything. And even if I die here, even if I die here, Kaiza would clean anyway. Because she has her Q. Even if Zillian doesn't have his W, doesn't matter. He should. The only way for them to actually do something here is Zillian hits both of his spells. I mean, Q, W, Q. And Warwick fears us and doesn't push us away because their CC is kind of counterintuitive. Anyway, easy kills and easy plays. I want to notice if I did any more ganks here. I don't remember exactly, but I want to just showcase these two. I got the free Infernal. And then uh, the game was pretty much over because, well... I think I killed Vladimir solo. Yeah. And bot lane just played good. That's a nice flash. And they actually went AFK at some point. So we just pushed and ended. Let me just show you. Okay, there they are. And we just, they opened. So this is the first example. Quick recap over each game. Maybe the lessons will be the same for each game. I don't care. Uh, when you go bot, you either do an aggressive gank or a reactive gank, or a defensive gank, whatever. Uh, in both cases, you should be interested in helping your team as much as possible. There is also the third case and the fourth case. Uh, the third case being when you roam till here and you back off. The third case, maybe even when you clear a bit of vision with your uh, vision word or vision score. Vision words is important. Vision words are very important. That English was bad. So try usually to get a vision word in this zone or... If you think you're going to run through it here, you can even put it here. I've seen people do that in the past. And this is a clear path towards gank and bot lane. Most of the times you'd want your bot to ward here. If they don't, you have to ult either from here or from here. Or to go in here fast enough for them to have no time to react. Most of the time when this is worded in lower elos, if they are around here, they will take about 2 seconds to react. And in those two seconds, that's your old cast time, so you have time to reach. Usually try to cut corners to make them waste their flash, to cut them their path of escape. So this is the main thing that you're interested to do between level 3 and 6. Don't roam at level 2 at bot. Roam to help your jungler if needed with a Q and E, but you will not really be able to do easy ganks without your W. So at, from level 3 to 6 you start roaming before in this gap. The main thing that you should remember when roaming is that you, all the time, you have to keep the wave in a good state. I mean, if you get kills, two kills, one, two kills, and you're sure or certain, look, this is a neutral state. Look, look at the 
state of the wave, and I'm already here. I don't really lose much when I come back. Plus it's a Vladimir, he doesn't have a lot of damage to actually do anything on the wave. So this is another important factor. I think we have like the gang type, which is aggressive and reactive, the four, the two other types of fake roaming and uh, vision world controlling, uh, and the wave management, the state of the wave. This is a very important factor because you cannot roam when your wave is full on the tower. There is no point. If the, there are 20 minions here, you're not going to walk right here and get the kill. No, you don't do that. Because you're going to lose so much experience and so much gold. Because you take a risk. Every time you roam, you take a risk. You go this way. You can do a kill there and it's good, it's worth. But if there are minions on your tower and you follow this path to bot and you also don't get any kills, what's going to happen? You're going to be 20 CS behind, a level behind, you're gonna die on lane because your opponent now has the experience advantage, and bam, you're useless because Talia is an early game champion, and if you do mistakes on the early game champion, you're going to, well, you know, lose. <laughs> anyway, this is the first game example, let's move to the second one. In the second game, we notice here Vladimir getting, getting ganked by an Atrox. Now, I actually started going up the moment he did that. I know I'm jumping right into it, but I hope it's not too much for you guys. Now, again, from this story, this point, Vladimir is low HP. I noticed that. I actually told, told him, go back, please, because you're going to die. And, well, he failed his flash. I'm going top here. I don't have ult, but I know with Ignite, I can kill this guy without a problem. So you don't necessarily have to camp bot. I will gank bot too here in this game. And... Yeah, let me put this. Okay. And just a good W and it's over. Because I pushed him into tower. Anyway, this is an example of a roam on top lane. After my top laner died, you can also roam on top lane before your top laner dies, obviously. And that's the case where you're going to do a bit better. And now we're interested in seeing more examples on ganking bot lane. I do have a good example here. Actually, here. Okay, let's back off. Okay, so Rengar is pushing mid lane, so I don't have any issues with my minions, with the minions getting to tower. Uh, I'm, for at this point, not besides not having any summoner spells and being 10 CS in farm, I'm pretty certain that if their bot lane is this pushed, uh, pushed far ahead. I could actually try to do something there. So let's just click it, speed it up. I wanted to notice the roaming distance, the roaming path and where I yield from. It's not mandatory to roam from the mid lane to the bot lane. There are a lot of players, such as our Soul Soul players, just Twisted Fate, which after a recall, after their 6, they just path towards here and alt here or E here if it's an Orlean Soul or as Dalia, you go towards this point. Now you should be careful at this scenario because sometimes e e this zone is worth it sometimes because they can ward over the wall, but they cannot necessarily ward here that easily because they have to take the longer route. So, so you have to out from the bush if you can. I kind of got out of it, but it's a good, it's still a good uh, out here because of the distance that I can cover. I mean, I can get through here. They don't have time to reach here. Okay. Now, before, because previous two versus two fights, as you can see, this score is quite in our favor, there is a good chance they, that, they, that they do not have any summoner spells, and they don't. And even if they would have, besides using them, I don't think the virus would still have time to escape, only if he would flash my W. But again, that's pointless since my Q deals a lot of damage too. Now, I jump here, Severe uses E for Tarik, and this is getting extremely easy. This is some free kills here, and it's exactly what we need. Now, the score is 8-3, Rengar gank bot, Suai gank bot, the same way. Now, I want to move a little bit forward again, because we destroyed that bot lane, I'm so sorry for it. Okay. And let's move a little faster. Now, Rengar is here. Q 
Okay, another kill. And here I'm actually coming to dive for that Tariq. Uh, look, look, even even this is a bit much for some players. Uh, <laughs> I had the flash to actually get the kill, but look at the improbability of this happening. The moment Tariq is at tower, I'm here. Because I have the passive, I know there is a good chance I will actually ca catch him. Remember, I don't say there is a certain chance. I, see, I say this is a risk assumed. This is a risk that I wanted to take to waste some time because my CS look again. My wave is deeply pushed into his tower. Maybe I lose here the plate, but it's irrelevant if you get the kill. And Tarek has some problems here too. I mean, he patted right. I don't know why Rengar didn't try to actually jump on him. But look, I got here and then I realized, wait, maybe, yeah. And it's a free kill. And I want to move further away. Where we do the same bloody thing over and over again. Now, we're here. Tariq gets into their way. Well, this is pointless for their swarming guide, but I just want to showcase how uh, fast the game can spiral down when you roam Estelia and you roam good. Now, the farm on mid, my farm is trash this game. I'm 20 CS behind. Cannon is taking plates. Normally, uh, you should have some form of someone actually to push this wave or to defend plates here and here. And Vladimir kind of loses heart. There is a 20 CS difference. But it's a good thing that we shut, uh, that I shut down that uh, Atrox early on because he would have had much more advantage. Now look at the scores though. Look at the scores and the goal difference. 4k difference even though I have 20 CS behind. Uh, I lost 20 CS in the difference. And 20 CS on top and 0-2 basically. Just because we camped bot and their bot is 1-9. We actually got a very good portion of advantage now virus played extremely extremely aggressive because he kind of has some form of pressure some form of better mechanics on lane but that didn't matter because he got caught so often that his macro wasn't that good also we move a little bit further i want to showcase this now after you gang bot a lot, usually your bot lane will move top. Their bot lane might still be here if they don't move too. Now, my top laner, I know he's behind, but I know also he's a Vladimir. I know he has uh, his ult because I can see it in the right corner. You can see your teammates' ult. So, their bot being obnoxiously or very, very behind, I can do the same thing I just did over and over again by ulting there. Now that's a horrible Tarik stun. And you can see here, it didn't matter. Now here Tarik kind of grills me down and I have to run <laughs> because <laughs> he auto attacks me to death. But it's a pretty decent uh, gank this one too. So we have three examples here uh, and I want to actually showcase two fights. This one being it. Uh, again, this is not really related, actually not this one. This is not really related to the video as much as related to the fact that I got the pentakill. And this happens very rarely. So the score is... <laughs> Eventually our snowballing led to this. And maybe, if you're not interested, skip like 40 seconds or 2 minutes on this clip. Because I just want to sh so showcase a small pentakill here. And yeah, spoilers ahead. Uh, basically we got Baron and then their Nocturne ulted, so being behind them, being behind, I actually uh, had a lot of damage on them and so I got a double kill. Uh, their Atrox starts coming towards us and this looks a bit like a lost team fight because Sivir died too. I got the kill somehow on Varus, that's the random factor. Easy kill on the Atrox and let's move forward. Yep. And that's beautiful. And if you dislike it being slowed down, I can put it at the normal speed, but I doubt it's that important. But yeah, we won this game shortly after. So the main key points of this second video, and my back is again slouching anyway. Uh, the main key points that you have to take from this small clip, small game is that 
you're not necessarily forced to gank from mid lane, you have to push the wave and recall if you don't have HP and then you can roam. Most of the time, if your opponent recalls, you can just push uh, if you still have mana and then you go this way, to, no, 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 yeah, right here, and then you ult on bot lane or alternatively you can go on lane around here or here and you can ult this to this ways in this ways. Alternatively, version 3, you can actually gank top lane, but uh, I recommend to always gank bot lane since there is a lot more kills to be done. And bot laners are way, way more squishier than usual, than their top laners, than your jacks, than your clad, than your atrox. Ganking them is very hard compared to, uh, compared to ganking uh, bot laners. And if you have some proper follow-up or some proper engage or they push too hard, which this, this is this case, you can actually get the kills pretty easily. Now in this scenario they had the push power and I had an easy gank here, but if we had the Leona or a Rakan, again that would have been a very simple engage by Rakan and by me, and uh, it's actually a standard thing, but if you have a defensive support it's going to be a bit more difficult to actually get kills but when they push your tower there is an always an opportunity to gang also you have to be careful to their jungler if he's around here or here you have to be smart about it you have to check his jung your, their jungler position when you're roaming so there is a pretty big list of things uh, I might just write it down I might just write everything in a comment below if you're interested I will see if I don't forget I might be, maybe I'll write it Anyway, this is for game 2, uh, check the comment below in the video if you're interested for a summary of the clip or of the ty or tips that I usually say for you to practice. Okay, so this is game 2, let's move to game 3. So here we are in game 3 and uh, before we move on, I actually want to say that an idea just struck me, well, I uh, said at the end of game 2 that I will post in the comments a list with tips. Well, now, right now I had the idea when I actually made the video, right now, when I actually make it, uh, I posted, you've probably seen already, a list at the beginning of the clip, I will post it at the end of the clip, and I will also put that list in the comments, basically is a cheat sheet of uh, roaming types, roaming guide, roaming... It's a thing that will help your roaming, I don't know how to say it. Uh, basically, I wrote all the ideas in this clip in that small small cheat sheet. And uh, I will put it also in the comments and you can actually put it in a text file somewhere. And every time you play a game, you can read it before and as Dalia and you, or even as Twisted Fate in Orleans Soul. And you can actually have the tips there that will help you do better ganks. Have the tips there that will help you help your jungler on scuttle roam or how to alt properly or how to assess your risk in this uh, in these games. Uh, so uh, another roaming type that is aggressive or defensive is when you fight for scuttle with your jungler or when you try to sneak in an objective. Now in this scenario, the game state is like this. I actually killed the Yasuo because they failed the gank, but bot lane is winning hard, their bot lane will be on top of the game, whole game, and so we have to play around that and we have to gank Twitch. Now, here, Rakan just put a vision ward at uh, Drake, and my wave, I just pushed it into the tower, you can see my items here. So, because our bot lane has priority, our Yasuo here struggles to actually push pretty fast and Sejuani, well I don't know where Sejuani is but I'm certain that we also we also had time to take this uh, we got a free Inferno, now this is the most important objective in the early game that you can get uh, besides maybe Herald and I believe the, this mistake that uh, there is a vision where they don't see it the, the mistake that they have no time to react or to f or they forget in Drake's and Barons, I think this is the biggest mistake that any player can do at any ELO. Losing a Baron is the most gruesome, the most, the biggest actually mistake that you can do at any ELO or Infernals. Herald is not that expensive, but you will lose plates. Because it's not that expensive because most people don't know how to use Herald before minute 14 when the plates go off. Uh, they get removed. Anyway. We got Inferno here, and 
I want to uh, fast forward a bit uh, because that was uh, Rome that was maybe aggressive, maybe defense doesn't matter, but uh, it was an objective Rome which was extremely useful. Now, moving on, we see here that we have our Rex sign. Now, their Twitch is 3 0, very strong, needs a shutdown, needs a very good shutdown. So, what we're interested in is to go here with the Rek'Sai and to get kills on bot. Now, my bot lane is far away, but I actually ping that I'm coming. And so, I move around here, I actually, uh, usually before I ult, I just do some assist me pings in the zone. And while Twitch has ult, he doesn't seem that concerned about me, and that's an actual mistake. Because Rakan just got him and we got a free shutdown. I'm not sure if he had flash here because he would have used it. Uh, because, well, it was a mistake that he did. But yeah, uh, killing Twitch there was actually one of the main things that uh, got us into the advantage side of the game. And the next thing uh, that will happen to that Twitch is that Riven will do an outplay. And we're going to slowly but surely start winning. What I want to showcase here is another thing, uh, a context that it's actually, it's actually interesting. Now, in this thing, in this state, we have Riven preparing for a fight here. We don't know exactly where Silas is because he's out of vision, but apparently he's not going top. For reference, Silas is 0-3, has no items completed, he's extremely far behind. Theoretically, Theoretically, if they play well, they could get a kill on Twitch, which is the only thing that matters. Now, Riven has Flash, Riven has Alt. If they play this correctly, even with Silas, well, Silas around this area, because theoretically here he would be, they would still do something. And, at this point, I have a choice. I have a very important choice, and you can see by my movement what my choice was. And, uh, sorry for me being out of camera, but... Well, back problems, as everyone else... <laughs> Anyway, I have a choice that's very important here, uh, because I can go top and surely get kills on all of them by nullifying some, uh, some of the pressure that they do have. Uh, or I can notice that Yasuo is chasing here Jin, and there's a minion wave coming. now. At this point, I know for sure that this Yasuo will keep chasing. And he's not that fed. But eventually, 1 versus 1, he would certainly kill our little Jin because there's a 2 level difference, a completed static shift, and our uh, ADC doesn't even have boots, so he has Yumus, but he won't actually escape this if I do not uh, react. Now, I know they're going to eventually do something okay here because... Let's face it, it's a Riven that's fed, it's a Rek'Sai that's fed, and also Rakan ult. I mean, theoretically, this should end well for us, no matter how... Well, they they could actually beat us if, they, uh, if our team fails hard, but I kind of trust a Riven OTP with 500-600 games. And I don't really trust this guy living, I'm pretty sure he's dead, so the risk assessing here... Let's do some math. I can go bot and maybe get the kill on Yasuo without Jin dying, or maybe Jin dies and I still get the kill, so win-win for me. Or, sorry, my eye hurts. I can go on top and assure and... Well, here I wouldn't even reach it in time, honestly. Here I know it will happen in like 20, in like 10 seconds, the fight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, about. Here it happens now. Now it's a fight that starts. Because Riven is already shown up here and went bot. Uh, I do not, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I did not have time to track the fact that everyone just went out of the bush, but I kind of expected this to happen faster than this. And I kind of expected this to be a certain death for Jin, and this to be a certain, or not certain, a trade maybe. Maybe two of us die, two of them die, maybe. Or maybe we win hard. And now let's see how this goes. I want to slow it down. Now, Rakan ulted. Uh, Yasuo started dashing. They start to fight here, she's stunned, and Riven, I'm gonna do this, Riven will ult and kill them all. Now, 
here he used Yumu to actually escape and I'm actually coming to his aid. He has heal and Yasuo doesn't really have the damage uh, to kill. Well, apparently he had flash so he could escape anyway. Uh, but again, this was a certain escape for our Jin because he flashed the ultimate from Yasuo. Now, if Yasuo ulted him, he would have died. But, but because we won the trade on top so easily, now theoretically I would maybe have time to reach it. But again, they won without me. This was a risk that I took and that I won because of it. I got huge advantage because of this risk, because they killed without dying. They will kill Silas too. And we also saved Jin, nullifying Yasuo's play, nullifying Yasuo's advantage. So we traded 5 for 0, because Silas will get caught eventually too. Now even if Jin died, I would have killed Yasuo. But if I wouldn't be here, we would still kill these people. I mean, if I wouldn't be here, Yasuo would escape, and I'm here, and we still kill those people. But I'm here, we got the kill Yasuo and he holds all if This is the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is when I would have gone top and Yasuo would have killed Jin. That would have happened, probably. Most probably would have happened. Because, come on, immobile ADC with... Yeah, we have flash up, but again, not that relevant because Yasuo could have ulted properly. Again, Yasuo missed uh, ult and Jin flashed it. That might have turned into another thing. We don't... We are not really that able to predict the outcome of the fight, but we can try if you want. Let's pretend I'm not here, okay? So, dash, dash. Uh, Yasuo misses Q, hits the second Q. Now here... Okay, without me. Without me. What happens? He flashed. There is no W here. Imagine there is no W. Jin hits this Nair, maybe. And I'm not here, imagine that. He has probably a dash on this champion. Yeah, because he has no debuff. So, Yasuo will dash to this, dash to Jin, when this uh, actually ends. Because look how, how much he lives, actually, even with me there. Now, this is the point where he would have probably died. Because he would have not had enough damage to use... Uh, his autos after the Q. This Q wouldn't kill him, so maybe that's the point where he would have died. Because before the reload time, he would have had time for two Qs, maybe uh, get some HP back because of that item, the, that keystone. So that's very interesting in uh, retrospective, uh, but that's not the most important thing here. Now, I'm gonna put this on the screen uh, after this. Uh, small uh, do over. I'm gonna actually close this and I'm gonna move towards the list. So let's look over the list real quick and do a recap of everything we've talked in this guide. So I will post this list in the comments so you can actually uh, copy paste it in a file if you want. I talked about types of roaming which being aggressive when you gang bot first or when you go to scuttle or when you take an objective, defensive when you help your team survive a gank, or you go bot to actually fight them, or you go to scuttle to help your jungler, or you go to an objective to fight the enemy team, vision words and vision control roaming when you go with uh, a vision word, buy one every 4 to 7 minutes please, so basically every, every 5, 6, 7 minutes buy a vision word because it's extremely useful, vision is most the most important thing in League of Legends, you can see it in every high elo game, in every LCS, LEC, LCK, LPL, and so on. Uh, yet, if you want the red trinket to clear more words, because in some games you'll have good supports that words a lot, good mid laners that actually try to counter you by wording, and do fake roaming by going to the middle of the river and try to pretend your gank, even though if you don't gank necessarily because you have no opportunity, but you make them lose CS by going there. Things to always check, these things. Wave state management. Are your minions under your tower? Do not roam in that case. Are the minions under his tower and don't have time to take a plate? Roam. You don't have time to take a plate, remember that. You have time to take plates and you think you cannot get kills bot lane right now. 
And here we cannot, you are always safe from ganks from their jungler or mid laner or someone else. Now these things are subjective a bit because because if there is a bar baron ongoing, you should go there. Or there is a drake ongoing, you should sacrifice. There are some sacrifices that I did not write here, but this is generally for levels 1 to 6 maybe. Yeah, let's write here somewhere. Uh, where do I write? Right here. 1, 2, maybe 8 levels or so. Anyway. Risk assessing. How worth the roam can be and how much experience or gold do I win if I get it right and how much experience or gold do I lose if I fail? You have to calculate risk every time you gank. Now this will be extremely hard for someone new. This is something you have to think about and you learn it with practice. You have to practice a lot of roams, a lot of ganks, a lot of uh, ways to get kills on bot. You have to try them, you have to see them. Do not pick Tolia first time you rank, for God's sake, please don't do that. Their jungler positioning. Do I see him on the map? Is he far away from bot? Is he already there or can he surprise me when I gank? Answer these questions. I forgot here a question mark. Answer these questions and assess again the risk because this risk is assessed by wave state management, by their jungler positioning and their by vision, by their vision. So basically if you want to do an equation, risk would be some formula between wave state, which will be all right, jungler positioning and vision. So there is kind of a rapport or formula between those three. If the wave is in your favor, we're going to say uh, wave state it's good, so it's one, zero if it's bad, I'm a programmer, so. <laughs> uh, jungle pressure, jungle positioning is one means he's not there, and vision, one means, this is the best case, they don't have words. So if all of these are one, you can roam without actually having any problem. Again, the fifth thing that you want when roaming, and the most obvious thing is have something to gank. If their bot lane is not there, gank only when you see certain kills being made. That would be it. Gank only after this risk formula. Calculate gank only when you know you can get kills. Now, if their bot lane just recalled, Obviously, you don't go there. It takes time for them to come back to lane. You lose a lot of CS. You don't go from the mid lane to bot lane when they just recalled. You go when they are there or fighting or they are low HP, but not when they are coming full HP to lane and they are not even there. Not when you don't know where they are exactly. Only when... Basically, work on certainties. Work on certainties. I don't know if that's a word. Work on certainty. Maybe that makes more sense. So that relates to the formula here. Now, did I step over words? Ask your question. Ask that question. See how they react when you go through major bushes. If they back off immediately, it means... If they back off immediately, it means that they have seen you somewhere. Or their mid laner pinged. Uh, buy one vision worth every four to seven minutes. That would be a good ratio in every elo. Maybe a bit much, but exact. But buy vision worth in the case that you have gold for Ludens. Do not buy vision worth. Okay, so you have to complete items and then words. A word you buy every time after you complete items. Gank only when you see certain kills being made. Very important. This is very important. You'll see it. Uh, again, we talked about it. I had a small brain fire, but don't mind me. This is maybe the most important thing though, these two. Combined with this, you can actually get kills easily. Now, things to do. Last thing, cross their path with ult, but don't get mispositioned. It'll ult in such a way that your team has time to reach you and the enemy team and them. Roam smart by assessing the general risk. This is the key point of this guide. This is the major key point of this guide. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this. I talked a bit too much on all the subjects, but I believe this was actually good. 
Now, I will copy paste this in the comments. I really hope it helps you. I will post the video everywhere I can so that more people see this because I really want. If I talked for like 40 minutes in this, I want people to see it. I want people to learn Tulia because I'm getting so triggered when I see someone else playing Tulia and playing Tulia bad. If you practice it, if you listen to the right people, I don't even consider myself necessarily the right person here. There are a lot of pro players that you can watch to learn from them. Tulia was even played last night, if I recall correctly, in LAC or LCS, I don't remember. I don't remember, or LCK, somewhere, people play it. It's a good champion, in good context, you should play it, you should try it, if you like it. If you don't like it, don't even bother, it's hard to learn. But if you follow this kind of videos, in time you will climb. But you have to focus, you have to practice and you have to focus. You don't just watch the video and then you're like, eh. No, you practice what you hear. I do that the same, I do the same thing, I watch pro players, I watch what they do, and I try to improve by doing what they do, and daily I try to actually better myself in that thing. I really hope this worked, you enjoyed it, and see you next time, guys. Goodbye.